Richard Byrd was not only an active Freemason, he also had his own Masonic order, and he also built Masonic lodges in Antarctica. He was raised, which means becoming a Master Mason at Federal Lodge No. 1 in Washington, D.C. on March 9, 1921, and he's also affiliated with Kane Lodge No. 454 in New York City, um, September 18, 1928. The reason why the September 18th, 1928 date is that is right before he got on the boat to leave to Antarctica. It was in late 1928 when uh, Byrd began his first expedition to Antarctica. And he took the boat called the City of New York. This boat right here, he took it to Antarctica. But before he got on this boat to leave for Antarctica, uh, his stop right before that was at the Cane Lodge, number 454 in New York City in September of 1928. This is the book that discusses that Antarctic expedition. It's called Little America, written by Richard Byrd. And when you'll read this book, you'll realize that this is not a Navy or a U.S. government expedition. This boat that went to Antarctica for the first expedition uh, is not Navy or anything like that. This is a 100% Masonic expedition. Bird talks thoroughly in this book about how he had to raise funding from all of his friends, from guys, uh, fellow Freemasons like Henry Ford. And it was all Masons who funded this uh, first expedition. And it is no exaggeration to say that the first Antarctic expedition uh, from the United States, this one right here, is through and through a Masonic expedition. And not only the first one, the second one as well. The second Antarctic expedition in 1934 when they built Little America 2, as discussed in this book right here, Discovery. This base right here, Little America, which they built in the Bay of Wells by digging down into the ice and was later exposed when an iceberg broke. It's also interesting to note that these bases sink in the ice over time. In just five years, between 1929 and 1934, the Little America base sunk approximately 25 to 30 feet into the ice. And while they did use some of the old buildings below, they had to dig out all new buildings that were further up and closer to the surface. And upon returning from his first expedition in 1930, he was awarded a gold medal by the Kane Masonic Lodge. And the funny thing is that during these expeditions, for anybody who crossed south of 66 degrees, or the Antarctic Circle, which we could see the line right here, anyone with Richard Byrd who was in his boat and crossed this Antarctic Circle at 66 degrees south was required to join Richard Byrd's Masonic Order called Order of the Penguin, officially established by Rear Admiral Richard Byrd. This is to certify that John has entered the domain of the penguin, having crossed the Antarctic Circle at longitude 174 on the USS Philippine Sea in 1947. This is during Operation High Jump with the Masonic United States seal with the Star of Remfam on top. Here's some of the mail that comes from Antarctica. And Brother Rear Admiral Richard Byrd, the Freemason, Kane Lodge, number 454. William Thomas Chandler, 19, on the USS Philippine scene, has been made a charter member of the Order of the Penguin, an order created by Rear Admiral Richard E. Byrd for the men of Task Force 68 to cross the Antarctic Circle while participating in the Operation High Jump. I think this is Richard Byrd's hidden hand symbol. And once again, maybe he's just putting his hands in his pocket, but very likely is his uh, Masonic hidden hand. And once again, with the double hidden hand. Richard Byrd from his Antarctic expedition, sponsored by the Masonic Stamp Club of New York and the Federal Lodge No. 1 of Washington, D.C. And here we have a Order of the Penguin Certificate. Now, what do we have here? If I didn't know better, I would say this is the Dome Firmament with the flat earth below. Why they would add a sinking ship 
is beyond me. But to all deep water sailors, wherever you may be, and to all seals, walruses, whales, penguins, and shivering mermaids, and all the inhabitants of the sea and the polar ice, greetings. Know ye that on the 24th day of January 1947, the longitude 174 degrees west, the United States ship the Philippine Sea crossed the Antarctic Circle and entered into my empire. It being the first aircraft carrier you ever accomplished his feat, and hearken ye, having braved the rigors of the Antarctic seas, shall henceforth be known as a royal penguin, and due honor and respect shall be shown to him by all seafaring creatures. Given under my hand, seal on this 24th day of January, 1947, Emperor Penguin, by his servant, Richard E. Bird. We have a Latin seal down here that says, Order of the Emperor Penguin. And I thought the mermaids were kind of cool because they had a, they have a fin on each leg, on like the uh, traditional mermaids, where they uh, two legs wrap into one. Here they got two individual legs, which uh, theoretically probably works better than just the one. And Richard Bird also established the first Masonic lodge in Antarctica when he went for the first time in the 1930s. He made the Antarctic Lodge number 777. And it is hard to see, but this is the Tyler's Register of Antarctic Lodge number 777. Lee Tyler is a rank in Freemasonry, and he is the guy with the sword on his apron. And the Tyler has a sword to enforce that only Masons enter into the Masonic Lodge. And here we have the attendance book of the first Antarctic Lodge number 777 at Little America. Of February 1935 that would be the second Antarctic expedition however as far as I know the Antarctic Lodge 777 was established in 1929 during his first visit to Antarctica and we can see all these signatures here including uh, Richard E. Byrd's signature right here very distinctive and identifiable signature and we can read the text unique lodge meeting of many nations held by Bird Antarctic Expedition. Now, given that these men are sworn to secrecy, it's fair to say that the Order of the Penguin most likely kept uh, a number of secrets for the Freemasons themselves. And maybe that's why when I go to Google Earth and try to look at a picture of the South Pole, there are no photographs. The Masons who own Google, of course, will not let you see what is south of 85 or 83 degrees down here. You can see the distinctive circle right here where all the pixels have been pulled directly to the center uh, to where if you zoom in here, you just see a bunch of lines being pulled together. The reason why is those are individual pixels being stretched to a central circular point right here because they don't show photographs south of this point. They've taken uh, photographs from around 85 degrees south around this location at the Queen Maud Mountain Range, and they've stretched those pictures all the way to this point in a manner that uh, there is no photo of this area of Earth. Uh, this, these stretched pixels that we're looking at right here are definitely from about 85 degrees south and I know that from reading Richard Bird's books where he went up the Queen Maud Mountain Range where he went up Lives Glacier and the geological expedition those guys encountered this mountain range way down here so the pixels that we're seeing of this Queen Maud Mountain Range they're not even in the right location they've been stretched too far south towards this central uh, point here which is completely theoretical and as far as I know this point of earth doesn't even exist that being said let's have a little bit of caution when we're looking at Richard Bird's account of what is at Antarctica and what he found there because it would be absurd to think that the Masons wouldn't hold secrets about that continent for themselves and their secret society and last but not least, once he died, we do find the pentagram on his gravestone with the upside-down five-pointed star. 
exactly like we see on the Masonic Order of the Eastern Star.